Thank you very much for watching my bikepacking film. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already, as I bring out a bikepacking film just like this every single month. This is the part of the video where I run through the behind the scenes and the route and a bit more information for those of you who maybe want to go and tackle the route yourselves or you're just interested in how it went for me. So I flew to Marrakesh from Manchester. Now I'd never been to Morocco before, I've never even been to Africa before, so it was somewhere that I really wanted to go to. Not only because it's a spectacular, beautiful place, but the weather is pretty good as well, considering it was February when I went. It was pretty miserable here in the UK, so going somewhere where it was 20 degrees or so is a good boost for morale, and it definitely makes for nicer cycling conditions than we've got in the UK at the moment. Now Marrakesh is a very hustling, bustling city, there's a lot going on, but it's very well placed for cycling because it's just on the edge of the Atlas Mountains, or the High Atlas anyway, which is an absolutely stunning place. Incredible scenery and just absolutely breathtaking in, in many respects. One thing you may have noticed which was slightly different to my usual films was that I didn't have any drone footage. And that's down to one reason only, unfortunately, and drones are banned in Morocco. As you arrive into Marrakesh Airport, anywhere in Morocco for that matter, there are signs everywhere saying you must declare your drones, drones are illegal. I knew this, thankfully, before I arrived, but it's one of the most integral parts of my films. It's one of the shots I use quite a lot is the drone, so it meant that I had to adapt slightly and change my filming style, and it was definitely more labor intensive. The amount of times I had to stop, set up the tripod, do a shot, come back and get it, check it, maybe do it again, was unbelievable because I didn't have that backup of having the drone footage. And it was a bit of a shame, really, because the scenery was so stunning that I know I could have got some absolutely breathtaking shots if I was allowed to use the drone, but it wasn't really worth risking it even just attempting to smuggle it in, because if you try and smuggle it out again, there's x-ray machines even before you get into the airport, you're just in for trouble if you get caught, so it wasn't worth the risk. Now I got a taxi from Marrakesh to a little bit further out, probably about eight to 10 miles out of the city center, nearer to the Atlas Mountains. I was staying at a really beautiful B&B &B called Tigwamin Sara, which was fantastic. The staff there were really, really helpful, made a big fuss of me, and they allowed me to store my bike box there even when I wasn't actually sleeping there so that I could go out and do the route. If you're planning on going to Morocco, this is an absolutely beautiful place to visit, even if you're not planning on cycling. It's just a very tranquil, calm environment. The food was lovely, the staff were fantastic, and it's well-placed if you want to go out for those walks, hikes, cycling, whatever you want to do. So definitely can recommend that place. Now, day one, the plan was to cycle from where I was staying in the Tigwamin Sara up to Ukaimadan, which is a ski resort right on the top of one of the mountains. So it was a real slog of a day. I knew it was going to be hard. I think it was something like 7,000 feet of climbing in 35 miles, which is just nuts. That's double what I would consider a tough ride here in the Peak District, for example but it was an absolutely fantastic day. You start off in a busy, bustling road, and as you work your way up to the mountains, the roads get narrower, you start to go through more beautiful villages, and people treat you very much like a celebrity. When I was cycling up to the tops of the mountains, 
I'd have an influx of children that would come running out wanting a high five and saying bonjour. It was, it was really nice. So yeah, that was an uh, interesting part of the day anyway. As I approached nearer the top of the mountain, it did start to get a bit more of a challenge. It was one long road effectively up to Urkaimadan. My plan was to camp at the top. There's a campground that I found on Google Maps which looked to be a good place to stop. It got harder and harder as I went up the mountain as the elevation started to kick in and it did get colder. There was snow at the top as you'll have seen, even though the weather down in Marrakesh was quite warm. It's not warm up there. But as I got higher and higher up the mountain, I started to feel more and more unwell, which is unusual for me. I've never got ill or felt unwell when I'm out on my bikepacking trips. It wasn't altitude sickness either. This is something that I've done a few times. I've camped up at the top of Mount Tady in Tenerife, which was higher than where I was staying, and that was absolutely no problem. I've done that several times. So I realized as I was going higher and higher and I was planning on camping that something wasn't right. I started feeling really unwell and very bloated and I started having quite uncomfortable stomach cramps which got progressively worse and worse. And I started to realize I either had a stomach bug or I had food poisoning or I drunk something that just wasn't sitting right with me. So I got pretty much all the way up to the top of the mountain and I just thought to myself I cannot camp here something isn't right so instead of setting up the tent at the top I turned around zoomed back down the mountain and found a hotel on the way down where I could book in now that wasn't the plan but I had to make changes just based on how I was feeling the hotel where I was staying was the Orochere a bit further down the mountain it was a beautiful hotel actually, the room was stunning and it's pretty cheap and that's something probably worth mentioning. Morocco in general seems to be really, really cheap, um, which is great. So if you wanted to stay at a quite a nice hotel for very little, it's definitely a place to check out. I arrived there, checked in and immediately went to sleep. Started feeling quite cold, which at this point I wasn't sure what was the matter with me, but maybe I thought just because I'm high up and I'm tired, I might be feeling a bit unwell and cold. Um, but in the middle of the night, I woke up with intense stomach cramps and then I started needing to go to the toilet and vomiting. So I obviously had some form of sickness bug or something that I picked up on the way. I tried to think what it was, but I don't think I even ate anything dodgy that day. But I was drinking tap water, which probably wasn't a good idea. And I was high-fiving a lot of kids as I was going up the, the mountain and probably didn't wash my hands in between that. So anyway, I'm glad I did that as opposed to camping because I couldn't think of anything worse than getting up in the middle of the night on top of a mountain which freezing, covered in snow and then having to spew my guts out and then go back into the sleeping bag. So I stayed at the hotel. I felt pretty rotten the following morning. As you can probably tell on some of the footage, I look pretty washed out. I realized the following day as I set off, I thought I might start to feel better, had a little bit of breakfast, that the day two that I had planned just wasn't gonna happen. The plan was to go to Tahanut and then back round to where I was staying at the Tigramin Sara. I started going up over the other mountain to Tahanut and I probably did about half a mile and I started feeling really bad again. I thought, I just can't do this. There's no point putting myself under undue stress just to make myself worse at the other end. So unfortunately, I turned around and went back all the way down the mountain to where I came from, which wasn't ideal. I had planned on doing four days worth of cycling in Morocco, but I ended up only doing two. And the second day was a real struggle just trying to get some footage. I didn't want it to be a one day trip and then straight back to the hotel and that was it. And hopefully you can see what I did there and maybe uh, the film was still enjoyable for you, but it was a bit disappointing. I did get an incredible star lapse as well on top of the roof of the Tigramine, which was fantastic. So it, it's a fantastically beautiful place, just unfortunate that I didn't have as much time as I wanted to film there. I did want to go spend some time in Marrakesh and do a bit of touristing, but I was just so unwell I ended up spending most of the time in bed. The traffic in Marrakesh, on a side note, is absolutely mental. So if you are planning on cycling when you get to Morocco, I would 
try and get a taxi or some form of transport away from the city centre because it is just unbelievable. The way I would describe it is you've got two lanes on each side of the main road going into the city centre, but there are three lanes of traffic crammed into two lanes. There is a bike lane, amazingly, on a lot of the main roads, but there are mopeds, motorcycles, taxis, donkeys, all kinds of crazy things that use the bike lane as well. So it's not the safest by any means. I felt completely safe when I was outside of the city, but actually in Marrakesh, even in a car, I was holding onto the, the bar, <laughs> thinking we're going to have a crash here at some point. Um, so yeah, a fantastic place to visit, amazing cycling, but if you are going to go to Marrakesh, make sure that you get yourself a bit of transport out of the city centre before you start riding, for your own sake. Because of the nature of this film, I didn't get to use the drone, so I was doing a lot of handheld or setting up the camera on a tripod. One thing I noticed is you do tend to get a lot of attention if you're a white tourist in Morocco. Not all of it is positive, but most of it is. As I was setting up the camera, I'd have quite a lot of people coming up to me and trying to sell me stuff, even in the middle of nowhere. Um, I've had a couple of people come up to me with big rocks, like gem rocks, and trying to sell me these, you know, for just a few dollars. But it's like, you know, it's a huge rock. I'm not going to be putting that in my pannier bag and cycling around the Atlas Mountains. It's already heavy enough as it is, but they don't seem to take no for an answer. So I was trying to be polite. But it was getting a bit annoying after a time. Every time I set up the camera, do the flyby and come back, there was someone waiting for me, trying to sell me something. Or just to talk to me. But I didn't mind talking. The incessant selling was a little bit annoying. And as I tried to go up the mountain, every time I'd see a really spectacular view, there would naturally be someone at the side of the road trying to sell something at that point, because it was obviously a very popular stop-off point. But it's something just a bit different. I've not really experienced that in Europe or in the US or anywhere where I live. So it's just been a bit different, but something to be aware of. I hope you enjoyed that film. I appreciate it was something a little bit different, but I would love to hear your feedback on it. I do love using the drone and I definitely missed it when I was editing this film, but it'd be good to hear your thoughts and feedback on it anyway. Next month, it's business as usual. I'm heading up to sunny Scotland for another bikepacking adventure. And this one's going to be a little bit different. So stay tuned and I will see you in the next video.